Um, I had a question on the with the CEO. Was the was it like a recording that was shown, and then there was like a live person in the chat? Is that how it went? So the CEO uh, for, for some of them, yeah, it kind of okay. depended on the the talk itself. Some of them were um, they were recorded as sort of ask me anything, and so there was one with Michael Dell and our CEO, and I think somebody else. And so these were these are people who aren't necessarily going to sit up and, and do the chat twice. Um, mm -hmm. And so I I think that that one was just kind of rebroadcast okay. as is. Um, others they had people. In some cases, they had the speakers were pre recorded mm -hmm. and they had, you know, maybe their colleagues on the that's an interesting chat for, for QA. So it was, it was kind of a mix, depending, I think, on what worked for the individual speaker and the type of talk that it was. But it seemed to work reasonably well. That was, I think, the best I've seen at work. That's an I've never heard that. That's a good idea. Like rebroadcast and then I don't know, like it's a rebroadcast of you, but I'm in the chat for the second time. It's rebroadcast, kind of answering questions. That people might have. Um, I also like the idea. I was just gonna say I really like the idea of like the larger conferences, like ChaosCon couldn't do it, but like OSS EU or OSS whatever, like some summit. Thinking about presentations over a twenty-four hour window that was kind of the last thing that you had said. So it's like to the events team saying, why don't we instead of a, a U.S. block, it's basically a twenty-four hour block, and. Well, and it wasn't quite a 24 hour block. I've seen I've seen people try that. We tried that with um, there was a spring one conference that we did that way. Okay. It was basically 24 hours straight. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I think, is really, really logistically challenging for the people who are running the conference. So this was they were at different time zones, but they were in blocks. So there would be like the US block that would be a block of maybe like four hours, mm -hmm. maybe five, where those talks were. And then there was another block that was in more um eu indian time zones and that was again probably like like four hours or something okay. so they were there were two chunks of time it wasn't 24 hours but they were uh spread out enough that there were there were talks in your time zone regardless of what your time zone was that just cool. sounds like a lot what red hat summit did um we went from something that was 24 7 because we can man it you know the chats and stuff but then we went to smaller blocks that were time zone specific what openstack does for the ptg we start early um to catch asia pacific and emea then americans start showing up then we take a break actually in the middle of the day and then continue again a couple hours later to try to cover as much of every time zone as possible so this kind of boils down to how can we be sensitive to people in different time zones um, on, on the basic level. And I like this for the Trisha for the for the metric like these can be like the object like the description of what we're trying to solve and the objective I think are pretty clear like make it globally accessible and some of the implementations I think are what. I mean, these are really great ideas um, and kind of like all the metrics, none of them are perfect, <laughs> you know, but um, thinking about time blocks or sending a, or sending a recording to be live within an hour, those are really good ideas. Now, the question is, is how relevant this would be for a hybrid event because you've got people in person and then you have the, the virtual audience. And then once we go in person, I mean, then it doesn't matter what time zone you're in because everyone's there. And I think that's kind of what happened with the Linux Foundation. They had, a, instead of picking the time zone that the event would have been in, they just picked their time zone when they first went virtual. I mean, I'm wondering if some of the things that Amy, you and Don were talking about would still be applicable, like even in an in-person. So like if they're recorded, getting the recordings out within an hour or whatever, you know, quickly, whatever that is. Hybrids that'll work. Um, 
at least having people available at shifts and stuff, I think that'll still work in the hybrids. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Tracy, do you have any more questions about the global time inclusion metric? Yeah, I just have one more question, which is, what can I do to start working on the metric? I will share the template. Yeah, and, and once you have the template, um, I think uh, being able to go over this recording is a really good tool um, to, to say this is what we talked about here. And also, um, I think um, going over, like like what Matt said, uh, that, that uh, about um, what we can put in specific categories of the metric. And, and also the fact that it's like something that you don't necessarily have to do every, everything by yourself. Uh, we, the community is here to help you with all the, the, the really nitty gritty details of the metric. Uh, just getting it started is all you really need to do. I have one question really quick about this. Um, are we focusing mostly on the accessibility from a like event participant perspective. Um, Cause I was curious to know about like how speakers have done that before. I know uh, my husband was giving a presentation and like it was a three day conference. And then one day he was like normal time 11 to three or something. And then he bounced to like 2 AM. And then the next day it was like 11 PM. And so like, is that sustainable? Is that something that we, like, do we need it to be accessible um, from a speaker perspective as well? I guess is what I'm trying to get at. That's a really good question. We have a section in the, um, I, I think it was to be filters, Matt. Um, I guess you can talk about it more than I can. No, I think you're, I was just gonna say, I think Lauren, your point's well taken. <laughs> We're talking about the delivery to an audience. <laughs> to heck with the speakers, they can, <laughs> right? They can figure it out. Um, maybe we shouldn't do that either. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm not sure how, um, like if that's two metrics or if it, if it is just captured in one, maybe the easiest place to start would be to capture it in one. That seems to be how we always start. And then if it, if both require like articulation, then well, then we can split it out to two. Yeah. That, that seems fair. And, and it might not even be this metric directly. Like, you know, maybe there's a different way of like compensating a speaker if they have to do that kind of time gymnastics or something, you know. Uh, but that was just the one thing that I was kind of thinking about recently. Thanks. I mean, it, it does make me think another, like an, an event metric is like being nice to speakers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaker appreciation. Are you caring about your speakers as well. Yeah. Okay, well, um, you get an extra t shirt sometimes. Um, so it sounds like these are things that we'll be capturing as we as we move forward with this metric and see if we can even make more metrics out of it. So I, I, I was just gonna, for Tricia, just kind of walk through just a few things. I was going to share my screen because there's kind of a couple yeah. documents that we draw together to to build a metric. And so um, let me share my screen real fast. So in the in the chat, I had put that spreadsheet colon and then this document. And so, um, so here's the global. So when we build a new metric, we kind of locate it somewhere in the focus groups. And then here should be the, the working document for it. So you can probably just build off that. And so then you shouldn't need the template because I think it, it should be in that Google Doc already. Yeah, I think every one of the metrics that we're going to be working on is at least started in the Google Doc. So that's a really good point. And then next week we could 
like based on what was talked about today, like actually spend time as a group to just real time edit the doc. Maybe I'll put that in the minutes too for next week. Okay, so um, speaking of working on a metric, do we want to move forward yet or do we want to keep doing this for now? Um, I think this is good. Okay. Um, so speaking of working on a metric, we have this trust and safety metric. And uh, do we, um, it looks like we have a lot of work on this. And um, Elizabeth, you had some uh, action item to work on the, smoothing it out do you want to just take another week to do that it looks like yes, got the update yeah i, did not <laughs> I like your update do what i was supposed to do so sorry it's okay um that's totally okay it happens um do we want to move forward to uh, and the inclusive experience at event or do we want to take save that for uh, after we talk about the all in and dei reflection because we didn't really get to that last week I'm sorry, what was the question, Matt? Oh, so we have the all-in project and DEI reflection, but I don't think we got to that last week nearly as much. Do we want to just talk about that briefly and then move up to the inclusive experience at event? Yeah, sure. Um, I was just going to make one note for Tricia. In the spreadsheet, it looks like the global inclusion that link to the Google Doc is to something called bandwidth inclusion, which is not global inclusion. So. It might be easiest just to make a new Google Doc and make it editable for all folks and then just drop it in that cell. Okay, I'll do Cool. And then could you put it in the, do you see in the minutes for next week? Could you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay, so I'm excited that we're going to talk about the All In Project finally. Um, who has that on the agenda there? Probably me. So, um, so the All In Project it's a it's a newly forming project that is um, a combination of a variety of different people, and we've been talking with Demetrius Cheatham, who's the um, Senior Director for Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging at GitHub. And the idea here, and there is there is actually a repo for this. It's GitHub slash all in, one word. Um, there's nothing there yet. <laughs> so you can take a look. But the idea is, is that um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is obviously a critical part of the work that we do. And a lot of efforts around DEI are sometimes centered within just an organization or centered um, within a small group of people. And so the, the hope here is that we can really think about DEI in two particular contexts to start um, from an open source perspective. And so the All In project is, one is All In for students and then the other is All In for maintainers. And all in for students is to build processes to help um, work with students who are historically from HBCUs or who are from HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities who may not otherwise have internship opportunities with large organizations or opportunities within open source and building um, processes by which students at HBCUs can be connected with open source projects and can be connected with open source organizations um, to build experience. And this would be a, a year long project for students. So it's uh, helping identify students, um, working with the faculty at the respective universities, um, understanding what that curriculum would look like or that internship curriculum would look like over the course of the year. 
And then also ensuring that the individuals who are participating would have internships waiting for them at the end of that, or they'd have um, longer term um, positions waiting for them at the end of that internship. And so the, the open source part of that is that we're not sure what, what that process looks like. And a lot like chaos, it's not about software all the time. It's about building ways of thinking. It's about helping people um, kind of make connections that they weren't otherwise making. And so the open source part is, is really for all and for students is really about working with people um, who have an interest to, to build that process and make those connections. The all in for maintainers is, is similar uh, in the sense that it would be a, a mentorship program where open source projects may have maintainers who created an open source project with the intention of just immediately just open sourcing some software and trying to build a community around that. And DEI was not necessarily part of that initial open sourcing. But over time, um, they have a, a, a conscious, there's a conscious effort by that maintainer to really center DEI in the work that they do. Um, but they're not sure how to do that. And so all in for maintainers is another part of the program that would help maintainers who have an interest in centering DEI within their own projects, providing resources, providing support, providing education to better center DEI in their own projects. So that's what the all in open source project is. Um, and right now it has all in for maintainers and all in for students. Um, we're, we've been working with the, with a group at the Linux Foundation. We're actually gonna be, there's gonna be a large scale DEI survey that's going out to members of the LF. And the intention is to, to use the survey to just get a better understanding of how we understand DEI in open source at large, it's a little tricky because like a lot of us end up locating ourselves in the projects that we care about and answering questions that way. So we're kind of trying to think about open source more broadly and how DEI is, is understood um, within that larger context. So that's all in, like I said, if you went to the repository, I think there's a grand total of, or you went to the organization, I think there's a grand total of four repositories at the moment. <laughs> there's nothing in them. Um, and this is still very much in formation. And so, sorry, I'm talking a lot. That's all in. And then as connected to the DEI chaos reflection, you know, a lot of what what we're doing in that reflection is thinking about ways that the chaos project ourselves can be more attentive to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So a lot of what we're learning in that process and a lot of what we're doing kind of action-wise in that process can help inform, for example, the DEI, or I'm sorry, the all-in for maintainers. So kind of what we're learning locally here to improve our own diversity, equity, and inclusion can serve as as ways of thinking for um, all in for maintainers. It's, it's certainly not perfect what we're doing in this community. Um, we can always do better. And I'm sure a lot of other people have input as to how to better center DEI within, within projects. And that's again, the open source part within all in. So all in is not a chaos project. <laughs> it's not, we're not, it's, we're, we're helping. So, I mean, we're just, we're talking with folks who have an interest, so. Sorry, I talked so long, but that's all in. And you can ask questions, I probably don't have answers. How can I get more involved in the All In project? That's my question. Uh, it's, it, so I don't know, um, ask, ask me and I'll get you. Like right now it's, it's still, Strangely, it's it's kind of like ask the right person, and then you can get an invitation to the meeting. So we probably need to. I'm looking at Elizabeth. Like, start thinking about or talk to me. Like, how do we, you know, as people start having an, an expressed interest in joining, it's this really weird spot of community formation. Like, what 
what it looks like, who's involved. I mean, I'm sure all of you have, have been here. So it's um, a lot of people have an interest in this, as you might guess. Um, so a lot, there's a lot of people who are expressing an interest in how we kind of sort all this out. But um, it's, it's hard. I wish it was easy. But so to your point, Matt, um, I, I'm happy to, to make that connection. Yeah, so far I've been working on their metrics, but I didn't even know there was a meeting. So that tells you how much they talk. We're working on it. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know that like the meetings have been like publicly broadcast anywhere. Like it's just been a handful of us that have been trying to pull it together. So it's not like we were purposely keeping people away. We just are trying to kind of get get organized, I guess, and figure out how we want to bring people together and like what that would even look like. And like, cause we didn't want to, you know, open it all up too soon when it's just kind of a, a super early, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah. One suggestion, not free node. <laughs> Not not what? Yeah. Sorry. Not free. Not free. Oh. <laughs> right. Point we eight. actually dropped the database. All our user IDs and everything are gone now. So sad. So um, looking forward to seeing how that turns out. I mean, it looks like pretty promising to me with the little experience I have. Um, are we going to have a website for that eventually or something like outside of the repository space? Yes, yes, certainly. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know if you need help on that. Um, but it we is, have a little couple, of, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, there is this funny spot of like, to Elizabeth's point, like there's a kind of a select group of people at the start, like, and I don't really know how that selection occurred, but like how that becomes then an open source project. It's always this weird, to me, like <laughs> threshold thing. I don't, I wish I had a good answer for it, but I don't. And it's like, it's hard to, to tell people where to go and we don't even know, like, I, like if you, like if you said, Matt, you want to help with the, Matt, see, if you want to help with the website, like, I don't even know who, who to tell you to go to see about that. So I think that's kind of where we are right now. It's super early and just trying to sort out, sort out so that when people do ask, we can say, oh, yes, come right here, you know, but we don't have answers to any of that stuff. You need a participate page is what you need. <laughs> my, my, my default is just to go ask Matt anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a couple more things on the DEI reflection um, section. Um, updating the template, do you want to start with that? Yeah, sure. So one of the things that has come from the DEI reflection, so we, as part of our reflection, we've gone back through all 50 to 60 metrics that we have released within the chaos project. And we've been asking ourselves, do the metrics that aren't necessarily like DEI working group metrics, do other metrics have um, a, a DEI component to them or could they? You know, so if, if um, so for example, um, time to first response on an issue or time to first response on a pull request or merge request, like could that be an indicator of, of DEI in any way? And the answer is kind of yes, right? If we continue to see that, that certain global regions are not having their issues responded to quickly, or particular individuals are not having their issues responded to quickly while others are, like that might be an indication of, of um, an inclusion issue or even an equity issue. So one of the proposals that has come from the reflection team is that we update the template and there's a pull request in there. So you can click on that and I'll bring it up here. And when I went and did this, I realized that there are other pull requests in there that I should probably attend to. <laughs> Isn't that how it works sometimes? <laughs> you go to a repository to put in an issue or a pull request, and you're like, oh, I <laughs> there's, there's other ones in here. <laughs> I should probably look at those. Um, so I'll share my screen here. Oh, Gary's. All right, well, he has a question, so that's great. 
I didn't take one. Um, but the idea was to add something a little bit more explicitly to the template that uh, enables individuals who are working on metrics in not only the DEI working group, but other working groups to think about how the metric may connect with diversity, equity, and or inclusion. It could be optional because as we've gone through this, this exercise, um, not every metric seems to be a candidate for connecting to DEI, but others certainly sure do. So I know what people's thoughts are on this. Looks like Diego already has a few comments. I threw a comment in there too. Well, thank you. Thank you, man. I don't like the and or personally. Why? Well, I, I can't say like if it's or. <laughs> so if it's and, that means it's all three. If it's or, it means it's mutually exclusive. I so. think I'm going to be that guy, but I think I think I think they all go together when it comes to you're affecting one, you're affecting all of them. Uh, I don't know. All right. Well, to be discussed. Um, what are people's thoughts on other thoughts on this besides <laughs> grammar? <laughs> I take silence as good, generally. All right. All right, cool. Um, let's see, Kevin is not here to talk about how metrics may be brought together, although I, there is some inspiration down below. Um, we had talked last time, I think, about possibly forming a, a DEI council, which would be a, a group of people who meet um, at some regular cadence to talk about how DEI can continue to be centered within the chaos project. Um, so you should remember that. And I think Amy, you had suggested the name council, which is great. Um, so if we're, if we're gonna, if this is something we wanna do, do people have thoughts on maybe what the first steps might be in doing this or, or put a stop on even doing this in, in the first place. And I can describe what kind of the council would, would at least my first thoughts on what the council would do as well. It, it might be helpful. Sorry, Amy, um, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It might be helpful to have a kind of a, a doc, I guess, to just start documenting what we, what our thoughts are and our ideas and why and how it might look and just to plop it all into one place. Cause I think we've just had kind of disjointed comments and conversations, it would be good to have it all in one place, I think. And I was kind of thinking bringing everyone together and putting together something. Um, just because everyone's not at every meeting, they re might, might remember different things. So just kind of announce, hey, we're starting to look at this. We're going to have a meeting on such and such a date. If you'd like to get involved and have any feedback, please join us mm -hmm. and then go from there. Okay, that's a good idea. Those are two good ideas. Um, Justin? Yeah, hey. Um, I was also thinking about this recently with some other projects like around governance and trying to set up these structures. And one thing that I found to be really unique in open source is this value value oriented approach to how you approach governance. One thing I was I'm asking about is I was looking at the chaos project charter and we have a mission in place about what the chaos project does, but I'm not seeing a lot of language about the why or the purpose or the vision or even the community in that document. So my, my thought is one thing that could make that governance conversation easier to start. And maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it means figuring out who's on this council first, or maybe it's looking at the community calls, but defining a, a vision for being the why we do what we do in the chaos project and trying to put that into words that's something that the community can share feedback on agree disagree with and then we have a mission statement already in the charter so i think that checks that box but also maybe something about a community statement which is more about the how we do what we do and there's i think there's a lot of assumptions we take by default just by being in the community and the way we work, we take that for granted, but it can be harder to, um, when it comes to governance, just making sure that we're all aligned, we're all on the same page, that these are things that are important to us and that these matter. Does that, does that make sense? 
It does. And, um, and so I, I like that because it ties to the existing governance document, which I think you're trying to do. And I like, I really like the community statement that describes how we do what we do. And, and part of that would be centering uh, DEI more deliberately within the project or continue to reflect on DEI as being centered within the project. Does that, is that fair, Justin? We do. Yeah, I think we do have starting some. Point. Go ahead. <laughs> I was Sorry. just gonna say, just, I think that's fine to start the conversation. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. I can barely hear you, Justin. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to cut you off. I was just going to mention we do have some of that uh, written out in the community handbook, not necessarily in the charter. Um, I'll drop a link here. We we talk about our values and um, like community health, openness, transparency, uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, or sorry, diversity, inclusion, and belonging, consistency, merit, trust, utility. So, um, should we have that stuff in the charter also? remember the last time we actually updated like the charter and the governance documents i wonder i wonder if it's time to revisit some of those as a governing board yeah i don't remember the last time we looked at them it was I, I, okay well there somebody put it it was march 15th of 2019 and um and two to your point, Don, too, I think the last update to the charter was um, we had written the charter with a certain description of how the chaos project was going to kind of work. And that changed when we started doing the working groups. Do you remember a long time ago, we used to have like a software committee and a metrics committee? And that's not really how we operate. So the charter was really just an update to be more deliberate on how we're actually doing the work. <laughs> so. Yeah, I remember when we made that update, but I'm just thinking like when I don't know that we've actually gone through the charter kind of section by section and talked about whether or not we really have all of the right things. I mean, the projects evolved a lot since it was created. Um, that's fair. Okay. And some of the issues be Sorry. that we aren't naming things the same. Like Justin was talking about one thing, but then he reads the charter and that's exactly what he was looking at, I think. Um, and I'm just going by reading the chat in the order of things. So I might be missed talking, Justin, but so maybe there's new terminology of what things are called out in open source land and we're just not using the right terminology. We have the information. It's just not where people think to find it. I need to build on it, looking at the like, what Elizabeth shared in the chat, like looking at this values page, I think there's a lot, I think this is something that we would make so much sense to start with for this conversation. I didn't know this was actually a resource that we, at least this values page was a resource. What I think the challenge might be for the group would be that there's a lot of content here and there's four key pillars I see, community health, openness, transparency, diversity and inclusion and belonging, I th oh, and consistency, merit, trust, utility boiling that down to a single statement or something that's a little easier to digest than a full page. It explains all those values, just like the example I shared in the chat of the Fedora project. They boil, you know, they have the four foundations in Fedora and you can explain freedom features, uh, friends features, friends freedom features first to people, but it's also easier to just start from one sentence, the vision statement, to explain the, the purpose, the motive for why we do what we do. So I think if we could boil that down to something, I think that maybe there's maybe there's a good a value to having this outside of the charter. I don't know, but definitely summarizing what's here and putting language into the charter would make sense to me as a next step. Can we put someone in charge of this? Um, this not not just the task, but like putting together the. The, the board, the council. Maybe I could, Matt, ask or Elizabeth that this would be a good thing to bring up with the, the audit group. If this would, at least for the charter piece. I don't know about some of the other parts, but maybe just the charter review. That's a great idea. And recommendations.
Okay, we have about 10 minutes left. Um, do we want to move forward from this now? I'll take the lazy consensus if we're not um, saying one way or another. Um, we have one other item on the agenda, which is inclusive naming within the chaos project. So that, um, I know Lauren, this is something that you have an interest in. I don't know if you're on right now. Yep, sorry, yep. It's okay. Um, maybe you could talk a, a bit about it if, if you're ready. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm not quite sure like what this looks like yet. You might hear my dog start talking too. Um, but one thing that was interesting to me kind of recently um, at my work was conversations around making sure the terminology that we use in tech is equitable and basically inclusive. Um, especially with like protests that happened last year, there was a lot of attention on how the language we use in technology can either include or exclude people from even wanting to come to the field. Um, and so I'm trying to find ways to make sure that the words that we use don't prevent people from being interested in tech as a whole. So I know there's the inclusive naming project that Justin put in the chat as well. Is there anybody familiar with this project? I mean, I'm familiar with it like at the highest level. Yeah, it started out at Kubicon. Um, it's broken up into a couple different what they call work streams language, community, which also include, includes tooling, marketing, and other things. Um, so basically right now, the language group is like trying to put everyone's lists together and things like that. Um, so it's more of a step above what I think Lauren wants to do. It's more of a, this is the big picture. And then from the big picture, you should take it back to your open source projects, your companies and, and work on it there. So like anything that, I mean, OpenStack is doing our own initiative, but yet I belong to the inclusive naming to get more information to be part of a larger project doing it. And then we'll take what we learned there and bring it back into our own system, if that makes sense. It does. Don, I saw you had unmuted too. Did you have a comment? Oh, I used to participate in that. And then I realized Amy was going to talk and she's been way more active than I have. So I, I just muted myself again. <laughs> cool. Um, all right, Amy, as OpenStack does work in this, you know, I think it how about, let me back up. What does the, is the inclusive naming project, you know, are they going to try to capture the ways that communities work with the provided language and provided tooling? Yeah. So we've got a talk submitted, I think for open source summit, um, which is how your company is, is addressing it. And like, I'm on there also to address how your company can influence an open source community. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is the way we're trying to go and whether it'll be metrics like you're happy with metrics or just metrics that a regular project's happy with, um, are two different things, but I think there's definitely value of joining it and being part of it. Um, it all depends on your interest level and time commitment and stuff. Cool, thank you. Even if we don't participate, there are loads of resources we can use to, you know, to make the chaos community better and just to sort of think about how, how we can think about inclusive naming. Yeah, it's definitely bring it back to your community type of situation. Cool, thank you. Okay. Um... Does not look like we got to an inclusive experience at event today, but uh, it, we have four 
four minutes left. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about while we're here? I'm good. I talked a lot. Okay. Um, I'm good. Well, uh, if no one has anything else, um, thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Thanks all. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody.